I wasn't quite finished, you guys. My phone was dying. But again, I come to you in love. And I just want you to know that Keisha loves you, but God loves you best. And um, we really need to just take time and just examine ourselves and uh, try to make things right. Right our wrongs in life. If you've hurt somebody or you know somebody that's hurt and then they need somebody, just talk to them. Just pray for them. Just try to encourage them. Like I said, we all fall short. Ain't no big sin, ain't no little sin. Sin is sin in God's eyes. And if you can minister to somebody, you can encourage somebody or whatever um, situation that God has you in, just do it, okay? This is, I'm, I'm telling y'all, it's just like I'm fed up. Like, with stuff that don't even matter. Like, that car you drive, you can't take that into the kingdom. The house you're living in, you can't take that to the kingdom. How much money you got, you can't take that to the you can't take that to the kingdom. Your children, you can't take them to the kingdom. Your spouse, you can't take them to the kingdom. Because when God gets ready to judge, it's gonna be solely God and you. One on one. Period. You get wrapped up in stuff. You can't take all them nice handbags you got, jewelry, shoes dresses what you did with your life whether good or bad you was on television you was in entertainment god don't care about that mess he don't care about that mess he the one gave it to you and like i said the same way he gave it to you he could take it away so don't get wrapped up tied up and tangled up in nothing but god because none of these other things are none of these other things are guaranteed only your relationship with god is guaranteed that's the only thing I stand here as a witness, and I tell y'all, like I said, I done been through some things. And I know one, but nobody but God that had his arms around me in situations where I know I was supposed to been taken out, but he had his hands on me. No, not her. She got work to do. But God could have let me die right there in my sin, and hell would have been my home. But he had greater plans for Keisha, and I'm grateful for that. So next time you look at somebody situation look at that could have been you okay it could have been you you look at somebody that lost their job that could have been you so wake up and tell god thank you you look at somebody their spouse passed away their children that could have been your family you know it's just the stuff that we need to worry about we don't worry about that i'll tell you god has our best interests at heart he loves you unconditionally, that he came and he died and he rose again so that we, you and I, may have a chance of the tree of life. You think the enemy care anything about you? No, he only care about what you're doing out here in the world for him. As soon as the times get tough and you start going through stuff, he going to run his little raggedy tail off. He going to make everything look so good to you right now. He might even have you confused sometimes that that's your blessing. Don't listen to that fool. Don't do it. Don't do it. That's what he does, come to kill, steal, and destroy. And he will he will disguise himself among people that you think that loved you. Had your best interest at heart. Uh-uh. That's why, honey, you better know your brother and sister by their fruits. You better study to show thyself approved. Whatever God tell you to do, you need to do it. Do it. Excuse me, y'all. Uh. Do it. I don't care, honey, who like me. Because I know Jesus likes me. I know who loves me. And I've asked God to place people in my life that are supposed to be there and remove those that don't. And the ones that I haven't met, if it's not meant for me to come across you, that was God's plan. And I'm good with that. I'm good with that. What you want your legacy to be? Just sit back and think about that. And let your mind ponder on that. What would you want your legacy to be? Whether you just high celebrity making all this money, living in these fancy homes and driving cars. What do you want your legacy to be? If you're just a regular nine to five person, what do you want your legacy to be? What do you want your legacy to be? If you just somebody that's PRN, you know, just working a regular job, PRN, but you're doing what you love, you know, that's your calling. What do you want your legacy to be? When you can't work no more. 
but God still wants you to work on his behalf. What do you want your legacy to be? The same way they talk about you right now, they're going to talk about you while you're in the grave. You know, most people probably go to the end. This, again, I say, you, you ain't no dumb questions or no dumb answers for Keisha. I speak whatever pops off my membrane. And I pray about it and I ask God. So, I'm going to be honest with y'all. Half of the people that go to funeral homes, they just want to go see how you look. What kind of foolishness is that? You just trying to go see how a person look where well, they laid the wrist right. Ooh, you still going to talk about it. Okay, they had too much makeup on her. Did you see him? Where they find that old damn nickel suit at? You know, they going to talk about you when you're dead too. Okay? We ain't going to never get around that because it's just people. You know? I don't care nothing about that either. I'm going to tell you something else. The more people talk about you and you belong to him, the more he going to bless you. God will never give up on you. No matter what you're going through. He will never give up on you. Never. You got to learn how to forgive those that despitefully misuse you. Because it, it's not about you anyway. It's a spiritual wickedness. It's a spiritual fight. Good against the bad. You think the enemy wants to see you prospering in life? You think he wants to see you growing a deeper relationship with God? No, he don't want that for you. Just like God got his, his soldiers, the enemy got his little raggedy troops too. But you got to learn how to speak to those spirits, honey, and pray. You think, oh, God, I pray. You know, I get tired. Oh, God, bless me with this car. Oh, God, I don't care nothing about that. If, if it's meant for it to be in your life, okay, so be it. But he cares about your soul. He cares about your soul. I do not know how many times I can say that. He cares about your soul. And he cares about your eternal life. With him. He don't want you to have to go stay with old raggedy. He wants you to have eternal life with him. With him. Lord of creations. King of kings, the great I am, the one who said I go to prepare a place for you. That's all he cares about. That's it. That's why I say you don't know what people are going through, so to keep your keep your mouth off of them. But if God has given you a, a platform and you're supposed to be doing his work, look, he said, if you be ashamed of me before man, I'd be ashamed of you before my father in heaven. So you better get on the bandwagon. You better do what God has called you to do. Do it. Don't worry about what nobody got to think, what they got to say. Like I said, everybody don't belong to Christ. And some of the people, they just say, I don't like you just because just don't like you. Ain't got nothing to do with nothing. They just see you like, mm, I don't like her. She's talking about Jesus. Okay, well, move along, baby, because I'm talking about Jesus to you, too. And I'm talking to Jesus about you. Okay, I'm praying for you. Anything you're going through, like I said, I don't believe things happen by chance. If I come across your page, it was meant to happen. If you come across my page, it was meant to happen. Some people, reason, season, a lifetime. I ain't got time to play with nobody. I can tell you that right now. I'm too old. My knee's bad. I get headaches all the time. Why, why, why I need to be focusing on something else that can give me another headache? Focus on Jesus is what I'm trying to say, y'all. Focus on the man with the plan. He know he knows the plans he has for you. And you ain't got to tear down nobody for him to give it to you. You just wait on him. Wait. Wait. When it's time for your season, when it's time for you to reap, when it's time for your cup runneth over, then he'll do that. What he got for somebody else, that might not be for you. That might not be for you, baby. But he loves us all. You can't be coveting what somebody else got. You can't be jealous of what somebody else got. To the jealous the way you want to hurt that person. Hurt, you know, people that love that person. Like, really. I've experienced so much. Man, I have. So much. But that won't change the way that I love you. It ain't going to stop me from praying for you. Oh, man. Just do what thus said the Lord. That's all I'm asking. You ain't got to even get nothing from me as long as you get Jesus. I'm not a person that's trying to impress anybody. 
I'm just doing my daddy's will. And yeah, I come to y'all. My, my channel is Keisha's Comedy Set. But this is something that God gave me when I went through this last, this last trial, this last storm. It's been at right two years now. And this is what he gave me to hold on to during my darkest moments or when I'm hurting or think, when I just don't understand. Laugh. Keisha, I want you to laugh. I want you to look back over your life and look at where you could have been, but look at where I got you right now. And this is what I need you to do for my people. Put a smile on their face. Deliver the word. Encourage them. Lift them up in prayer. My platform ain't, ain't there for everybody to like me because I said everybody ain't going to like me because I love Jesus. Everybody ain't going to like me or love me because they don't believe in Jesus. But like I said, whoever's supposed to be there, God going to have them there. Whether it be somebody just come across it and they hear and they be like, oh, you know what, man? I need to do this. I need to do this today for this person. Tomorrow ain't promised to nobody. It ain't promised to nobody. What your legacy going to be? What is it going to be? I really do. I get frustrated when I just cut on the TV and all I see is people killing each other. I look on these social media sites and somebody else done died. I'm trying to know that's somebody's child. That's somebody's brother. That's somebody's sister. Somebody's mother. Somebody's father. And you just go about your life like it was nothing. You go to bed easy. You didn't kill somebody, then you up doing what you do the next day. Or go to the mile. You just... You just killed somebody. You enjoying a meal. And these people looking for their loved one. Oh, God. Please help us, Jesus. Mm-mm-mm. Oh, God. We just need you, oh, God. We need thee, oh, God. We need thee. And even for the people out there that think you don't need them, stop lying to yourself, okay? They ain't number the enemy. He they ain't number the enemy. Don't believe that mess. Pray about the people who God puts in your life. Ask the Lord to remove people that don't supposed to be there. It's okay. It's okay. I don't care. Personally. I love you the way God loves you, which is unconditionally. It don't matter what you say, what you do, how you come. Because if you ain't supposed to be in my life or you doing something crazy, talking about me or whatever, done, done something to stab me in my back or whatever, God going to reveal that to me anyway. It's not going to change that I love you, but it sure will change me how I move. I only have a couple of friends in my life that's been there for me ten toes down, and I can count them on one hand. And Jesus, the first one. I don't fool with people like that. Once you show me your true self, I'm going to love you. I'm going to pray for you. I'm going to encourage you, but I don't fool with you on that level no more. Because you don't show me who you really are. Do I ask the Lord to forgive you? Yes, I do. But some people think just because things happen in your life and you've asked that person to forgive you or you've forgiven that person that you forget. No, you don't forget. You don't forget. And I'm going to say this because, like I said, I'm at a point in my life where I'm comfortable. And um, I don't, what I got to lose? Nothing. Maybe this going to help somebody else. You do not forget nothing. You know, and I'm not saying this just to be like, oh, I, don't, I ain't forgot this. And I, I never forget that person because you see stuff like that all the time. And it breaks my heart when I hear people say they will never forgive that person. Um. I'm sharing this because I don't care. And like I said, it might help somebody. From the age I was about five, six years old to I was probably about 15 or 16, I was raped. I was molested. And it was somebody by somebody in my own family. Somebody close in my family. I remember the person telling me that nobody was going to ever believe me. I remember when I went to my family. I remember one of them telling me, don't you ever speak of that again. You a liar. Slap me. I remember all that. I remember the first time this person breathed on me. I remember all of that. And that's what I was saying, that I don't understand how it can be a God. And he would allow something like that to happen to me. I just didn't understand that. But God, he, he had a bigger purpose in that. 
he allowed me to go through it because he knew I was going to need it later on in life. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Do I. Am I upset? Am I angry at the person? No, I'm not. I'm angry at the sin that was committed. I remember this person coming to me and asking me to forgive them. And I told them, I forgave you a long time ago. You need to forgive yourself. But did I forget? No, I didn't. I remember every freaking time, every freaking place, how it made me feel. I remember all of that. I remember all of it. Because I was the type, and the, and the enemy, he did that. I was the type of young lady that I knew growing up that I would save myself till I got married. I knew that's who I was. But this person, they snatched that from me. But again, I don't hate them. I forgave them. That's something they need to deal with. Forgive yourself, honey, and ask God to forgive you and repent. I don't know. What? No. And, and, and yes, I was mad at God. I was very angry at God. But God showed me it's not about you, daughter. It's not about you. It's about me. But yeah, I just felt disgusted, felt dirty, was scared, flinching every time I turned around. Just, they just creeped me out. I tried to make sure I got out the house when that person went there. Just disgusting. And even to this day, I think about it. And I'm disgusted by it. But again, the sin. I don't hold nothing against the person. People be so quick to talk about you. Dude, you don't know what that person been through. You don't know that. Sometimes you just keep your mouth shut. And everybody ain't going to share that with everybody. I remember having to go to my husband and tell him that when we got married. It was not easy. But I did. I remember having this conversation with my mom like a year ago. And she blamed herself because she was like, I don't remember. I said, it's okay. It's all right, mama. But it hurt her. It broke her. That she couldn't protect me. I remember having this conversation with my brother. Same thing. Yeah. So that's why I'm extremely protective of my husband, of my children, of my granddaughter. Every blue moon, you may see one of them in my video. But I'm going to tell you, it's going to be every blue moon. Because I just don't trust people now. I don't. Not, I don't trust people like that. But yeah, you look at me and you wouldn't even think half of the things I've been through. That I've been through that. Yeah. Around this this time last year, I was just getting out the hospital um, a few months before from being in the hospital with sepsis. Just poison just running through my body. I had no clue how sick I was. And that's what I lost my father-in-law to. Around the same time, um, a few years back. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they said, we want to keep you in the hospital one day. Just watch you overnight. Well, that hospital visit turned into nine days. That's how sick I was. I wasn't supposed to leave that bed. I wasn't supposed to come home. Not by statistics. And what was going on in my body. I wasn't supposed to make it home when I got robbed. I wasn't supposed to make it home after my organs started shutting down. When I went into another flare for my conditions, I wasn't supposed to make it home. But again, God says, I know the plans I have for Keisha. And I'm grateful for that. I'm so grateful for it. <sighs> but, you know, I just want to come back, guys. Just really focus on your calling. Focus on your legacy when you leave here. And just try to bring light and positivity and energy that's going to lift people up. Love people today. Pray for people. It's so much bigger than us so much bigger than us we have to do better as a society we really have to do better we really have to do better it breaks my heart the stuff that's going on in the world today but it also shows me that god is on his way 
He on his way. And I just want everybody to be ready. You, if you pass tonight or you pass today, do you know where your home going to be? Do you, can you honestly say that? Well, if you can't honestly say that, then you need to get some things right today. Don't wait till tomorrow. Today. Get it together. And again, I love you. God loves us best. Don't worry about what nobody got to say about you. You focus on what God has called you to do. And I can assure you, he will get all glory. All glory at the end of the day. I love you guys until the next time, boo. I'm going to be back to talk to you. Don't worry about it. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back, boo. Y'all have a good night. Love you always.